To start the project off, we had about six goals that we wanted to accomplish. The item on the top of the list is omnidirectional movement. Omnidirectional movement, or the ability to go forward and sideways without turning, is very helpful while trying to traverse the different field environments. The second goal is to determine if this drivetrain would be a viable option for future seasons. Our third goal is to be able to cheaply make the drivetrain so that it's easily accessible for us as possible. The next two goals are to be able to get across the field in under two seconds and to be able to push to a robot fitted with mechanic wheels. Our last goal is to have fun and experiment with new ideas. At the current moment, we have found several benefits of differential crab drive, mainly over mechanic drive trains, but also over coaxial swerve. Some of the benefits compared to mechanics are less slippage, faster acceleration, and a very short stopping distance. It also has great torque and pushing power, no unintentional drift. Compared to coaxial swerve, we have found two advantages. Differential crab is much cheaper than coaxial, and it doesn't take up four out of our 12 servo outlets. Though we have found good benefits to differential crab, we have also found some drawbacks. There are two major drawbacks and two minor ones. The first major drawback is that the robot cannot physically turn and drive sideways simultaneously. But according to our research, the only time you would need to do this in competition is during the autonomous period. The second major drawback is that currently, if we added odometry pods, we would use seven of the eight encoder ports for our drivetrain alone. We do have some modifications that would get this number down to five. The first minor drawback is with our current design, the wheels would have to manually reset to the forward position, or else the robot will drive backwards. The second minor drawback is that the differential crab drive is more difficult to code and design. To start off the software portion of the development of the robot, we needed to know which way the pods were facing. The only av option available to us at the time was to find the difference of the two motor encoder values. This is because when the wheels are driven forward, the encoder values move away from each other and we can add them together to find how far the pods have rotated. To decide how fast the wheels should spin, we took the absolute value of the joystick that controls the robot. Next, we needed to convert from the angle we got from the joystick into encoder counts, how the motor lo knows its location. We did this by manually spinning the pods five times while reading the encoder values, and then dividing the number of encoder counts by the number of degrees that we spun the pods. Now that we knew where the wheels needed to go, we just needed to change the power we give them so they rotate to where we want. We did this by making a custom PID controller. This lets us convert from the number of encoder counts we are away from where we want to be into power to turn the pods. We then needed to be able to turn the robot. This was an issue because you need to change the way the robot turns depending on what direction it's moving. For example, if you're standing still, it drives one side forward and the other side backwards. It does the same if you're moving forward. However, if you're straightening, the wheels have to turn in a way so it snakes in a circle. At this point, we were able to drive the robot. But to change directions, we had to point the front of the pod where we wanted the wheels to go. This causes an issue when the pod has to spin all the way around in order to drive in a different direction. What we do in order to fix this is calculate the distance from where the pod is facing to where we want it to go. We also calculate the opposite direction to determine the shortest path to turn the pod. The direction the wheels turn is de determined by the direction the pod is facing. Once we are happy with the state of code, we incorporate it into a hardware map. This allows us to use one line of code to implement the entirety of the drive To design our robots, we use OnChain. For each drive side, we have two motors arranged in tandem. To move the wheel, one motor runs the top Jacobian gear and the other runs the bottom Jacobian gear. This makes it so that when you run the motors in opposite directions, it turns the smaller gear between the two Jacob Jacobian gears so that it drives the wheel. When you turn them in the same direction, it locks out the middle gear and rotates the pods. Since the two pods are connected, they are always parallel and run the same direction. This makes it so that you can't turn if you have just one drive pod. Each side has two pods, one on each side of the motor. Each pod has two different sections. The wheel carriage, which holds the go build stealth wheels and axles, and the second one is the powering mechanism, which is the gear surrounding the wheels. The, motors, the two motors are geared to a central axle on a one-to-one -one gear ratio. This is what powers the system. There are connector gears between the power gears and the Jacobian gears. A Jacobian gear is what we're gonna call the combination between a bevel and spur gear that runs our wheels. On the central gear is powering the top, one of them is powering the top, and the other one is powering a bottom Jacobian gear. The gears are supported by multiple V-group bearings, 
so that they can smoothly rotate and power the pod. Now, the two Jacobian gears then power a bevel gear to spin the wheel. However, this, uh, we also need to support the outside of the carriage, which we use more V-groove bearings for. A problem that we had was the gear skipping. We knew having the gears made of aluminum would fix this, but for a short-term solution, we have another bevel gear that is being rotated by the Jacobian gears. However, it doesn't have the hex shape, so the axle spins freely inside of it. This ended up proving to be a good solution, and we decided on adding it to the future refined design. Now we'd like to describe some benefits of our design. The first benefit is the minimal amount of slippage. Due to us being able to use much grippier wheels, the robot is less likely to slip compared to something like Macan and Drive. Another benefit of this design is the price. The price of the drivetrain, not including the rev control hub, batteries, wires, comes to about $427. Most of that cost comes from the 5202 series 435 RPM go build and motors, bearings and hubs. This table has a list of all the prices and the items, and you can pause if you'd like to look at it. While we do see many benefits already from the current design, there are a couple of modifications we'd like to make in the future. One of those modifications we'd like to make is the use of bevel gears to make the motor sit perpendicular to the ground. This would allow us to have more space when using the drivetrain in a season. Another modification we'd like to make is the use of through bore encoders, typically used for a down tree to keep track of those positions, instead of the encoders on the motors. This would be beneficial because it would allow us to use more encoders on different parts of the robot, like slides and odometry. Right now, with the four encoder ports currently being used, if we had three more for odometry, we would use, be severely limited in what we could do with our robot. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section and we will do our best to read them and respond. Thanks for watching, and if you are interested, we've linked the repo with all the code in the description for you to check out. We've also put a link to the CAD if you're interested in looking at that. Thank you.